Chemistry lecture number 100, Hess's Law. Hess's Law states that the change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction can be found by adding two or more thermochemical equations. For example, suppose we're given the reactions S plus O2 gives SO2 with a delta H of negative 297 and then 2SO3 decomposes to form SO2 and O2 and we want to find the uh, delta H for the equation 2S plus 3O2 gives 2SO3 alright so we don't know what the delta H is now we can add equations A and B to get the delta H for equation C so basically we're going to add these two equations in some way to get this third equation so to do this, we need to modify equations A and B to make them look more like equation C. And we do this by multiplying and flipping the equations. For example, equation C has a 2 in front of the S, while equation A has an implicit 1 in front of the S. So here's equation C, and there's a 2 in front of the S. But if you look at equation A, implicitly there's a 1 in front of this S. So, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply equation A uh, and its delta H by 2 so that the S matches equation C. So, here's equation A. There's no 2 in front of the S, but there's a 2 in front of the S in equation C. So, I'm going to multiply equation A by 2 so it also has a 2 in front of it. So, multiplying all this through by 2, S becomes 2S, O2 becomes 2O2. SO2 becomes 2SO2, and then negative 297 kilojoules multiplied times 2 becomes negative 594. So modified, now there's a 2 in front of the S in equation A, which matches the 2 in front of the S in equation C. So next let's compare equation B with equation C, and notice that the 2SO3 is on the left side of equation B here while it's on the right side of equation C. So to make equation B match equation C, we reverse the equation and also change the sign of delta H. So here's 2SO3, and we want it to be on the same side as it is in equation C, which is on the right side. So we're going to flip this equation. So this moves over to this side. These two guys move over to this side, and then 198 becomes negative 198. So when you flip the equation, you change the sign of the delta H. Now if we add the modified equations A and B along with their delta H's, uh, we get equation C and its delta H. So here's modified equation A with 2S, <coughs> and then here's modified equation B with the 2SO3 on the other side. So if we add these together, let's see if anything cancels. I have a 2SO2 on the right, on the left side here, and a 2SO2 on the opposite side here, so these guys cancel. 2S comes down here. 2O2 plus 1O2 gives me 3O2. And then 2SO3 we just bring down. And then if we add these things together, we get negative 792 kilojoules. So what this means is that when sulfur and oxygen react to form SO3, it releases 792 kilojoules of energy. So, we have our problem solved. Now we know the delta H for this reaction. The delta H for a reaction can also be found if you know the heat of formation of products and reactants. And the next picture is a chart of thermodynamic properties which gives the heat of formation of various substances. And notice that the elements have a delta H of F equal to zero. So, chemistry books in college and uh, high school often give charts like these. They list a whole bunch of substances and then next to the substances they give the heat of formation of the substance. So you use these charts to help you solve the problem. Uh, you can get this chart uh, if you go to www.richardlouis.com and uh, click the PDF file for chemistry lecture number 100. So we're going to use this to solve the, the next problem. So the heat of formation uh, for a reaction can be calculated using this formula. So delta H, Rxn, is the change in enthalpy for a reaction. This little epsilon here is, means sum of. So it's sum of the change in the heat of formation of the products. So that's what all this means, sum of the heat of formation of the products. And then 
sum of change in heat of formation of reactants. All right, so this whole mess means sum of the heat of formation of the reactants. So using the chart of thermodynamic properties, let's find a change in the heat of reaction for this chemical reaction. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. How much heat is uh, released or absorbed in this reaction? Let's see. So let's use the uh, thermodynamic properties chart and we're going to list the heat of formations of each product and reactant. So these are the products and these are the reactants. So I'll do it for one. CH4. So we look on here. So here's CH4 right here. And if you look across, it says negative 78, 74.8. So we'll round that to 74.8. So CH4 is 74.8. And we do that for all the rest of these. So um, the other reactant for oxygen, well, that's an element. So if you look on the chart, the value is going to be zero. All right. And then for carbon dioxide, if you look on the chart, it'll say something close to negative 394. And then for water in the liquid form, it's going to be 286. Now notice that for water, I'm multiplying it times 2. Why am I multiplying this number times 2? Well, it's because there's a 2 in front of the H2O in the formula. And the same thing for the oxygen. Why am I multiplying 0 times 2? Well, there's a 2 in front of the oxygen. So anytime there's a coefficient in front of the substance, you use that to multiply the heat of formations by that number. All right, so we multiply the H2 and the O2, uh, multiply it by two because there's a two in front of these substances in the balanced equation. All right, so this chart here is this chart right here. So next, uh, we're going to add the heats of formations of the products and reactants. So we're going to add these two numbers to get the sum of the heat of formation of the products, and then we're going to add these two to get the sum of the change in heat of formation of the reactants. So for the products, negative 394 plus negative 572 gives me negative 966. All right, so we're going to pay attention to some of these numbers. 74.8 plus 0, 74.8 plus 0 gives negative 74.8, negative uh, 74.8. So <clears throat> we're going to take these two numbers now, and then we're going to subtract these two numbers, all right? And that'll give us uh, the final answer, all right? So these two numbers. one here. Okay, so we have the sum of the change in the heat of formation of the products minus the sum of the change in the heat of formation of the reactants. If you subtract these two numbers, you get negative 891.2 rounded to three digits, negative 891 kilojoules. So what that means is that the combustion of one mole of CH4 produces 891 kilojoules of energy. So let me see if I can find the original reaction. Oh, okay, here it is, yeah. So when this reaction occurs, the amount of energy it releases is that. 891 kilojoules of energy is released. So those are two ways of finding the energy released or absorbed in a chemical reaction. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 100, Hess's Law.